Uh, yesterday, there was some an, an announcement made by the ASA uh, pertaining to the future of the schedule. So we brought Mike Tyrell on this morning. And uh, Mike, you and I chatted on the phone yesterday, and, and you were telling me about the thought process and the plan to uh, move forward with a few ASA shoots yet this summer. So uh, welcome, Mike. Uh, tell us where we're at. Well, thank you, Josh. Thanks, PJ. I'm looking forward to uh, being able to talk to everybody today. Um, we're in the process right now of getting final permissions from the state of Kentucky to move ahead with our Pro-Am in London. In order to do that, we've asked to move the date back to the end of June, which would be the same date we had previously decided to go to Metropolis. In conversations with our contacts in Metropolis, the state of Illinois, the state of Illinois is going to be under a, a more controlled situation that could not guarantee us any kind of opportunities going forward. They said it was about a 25% chance they might be open for business. Uh, just to give you an example, the site at Mermet Lake that we use is, is currently completely shut down. There's no movement there at all. They can't even come in and fish in the ponds out there. So that's how restricted that particular site is. And it was partly the site itself, plus the fact that so much of the city of Metropolis or town of Metropolis is closed, including the Harris Casino. So worked with the people in Kentucky. We're actually going to the Kentucky State Sports Commission who is packaging up our request and, and they feel very comfortable that any kind of outdoor activities that aren't constrained to a, a building and where we have room for people, you're putting people in a you know hundreds of acres, but that's why the Kentucky site and the Kentucky proposal is being pushed forward and we're not going to Illinois this year. So the site, uh, you have that issue, but then the other, obviously the other logistics which having, with having that many archers is uh, food and lodging. What are they telling you about that? Well, they, they told us we could put a bunch of cots in the building there on site, and they wouldn't have a problem with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, you know, my, obviously, this, this whole process not only consists of getting the the approvals to have the event, but that the support network that we need from the community is in place. That's the hotels, the restaurants, um, everything else that, that everybody's going to need to make this a successful weekend. All that has to be available and moving forward. And that's why they say the phase two or phase three opening levels are going to be very critical to this to allow us to do that. But one of the other things that we're going to be doing with this particular event is expanding our shoot times for everybody to actually start letting people come in and shoot their competition around starting on Thursday. It's not something ASA would like to do. We always like to say that everybody shoots in the same conditions on the same dates, doing the same thing, so that's an equitable scoring opportunity for everybody. But in order to keep the the numbers of people on the ranges to ease pressure on the on the hotels. And the restaurants, if we had people come in on and shoot Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, um, that's going to spread that out, take some pressure off of everybody. Shoot down. Talk about that. Usually we got stands out there with people sitting down. What do you think that <laughs> well, may look like? <laughs> okay. Well, last year, as you guys well know, because you were, I think you guys were there. No, you were there. The, yes, um, the, shoot down was held, the, the shoot down was held on the baseball diamond, the field out there. Um, and the, the one thing we did do is put some bleachers. Well, obviously this year we would dispense with the bleachers. We would pretty much have the shoot down in the exact same area it was this year, but then allow people to come into the infield or the ball field and bring their stools in and just basically you know, scatter around and everybody can stay there. They can see it, but no one's going to be congested like, you know, 20 people on a small bleacher kind of thing. So without the bleachers, I think the shoot down will be fine. But yeah, we're going to have to do a lot of, uh, of thinking and, and planning and, and Rubik's Cube twisting on site as how to structure the, the sponsor area, the food court, uh, how to handle all those little details that we're going to get into of, of making sure everybody feels not only um, that they're getting a fair shot as far as sponsors, but they feel safe, that they feel like they're in a, an environment that's not going to put them at risk. So, Mike, what does uh, moving forward yep. for the archer themselves, what does registration look like now? Will they have the option on registration to choose the days they want to shoot? What What's the process for the archer? We're going to we're going to basically there's, there's three things that everybody has to understand. If you've already entered, gone online and registered for the Kentucky or the Illinois programs, they were originally scheduled. All those entry fees, all those entry monies you've paid are now back as a credit on your account. So no one is automatically enrolled and registered for Kentucky. 
If you want to come shoot in Kentucky and you already prepaid for either Kentucky or Illinois, you can go back online, the credit is there, and you can use it. It won't let you sign up for the team shoots at this time, but that means that if you have signed up for Kentucky or Illinois, you're going to have to go back in and, and re-register. If you don't want to come to Kentucky but want to come to Coleman, that credit is still there for you to use at Coleman. The other thing that affects shooters that was in the announcement yesterday is the Shooter of the Year program. How has that changed this year um, with the two competitions now off the calendar? Basically, the Shooter of the Year program now is going to be basic. We're going to count two of your Pro-Am scores. So if you shot fully, you have one score already on the books. You then can come shoot Kentucky. You can then come and shoot Coleman. And your two best scores out of those three events would then stamp your shoot of the year. If you miss Foley, you still have two tournaments where you can come compete, post scores, and still qualify for shoot of the year. So it's going to be two events, and then you drop one and then count the classic. Uh, if you missed Foley, you just got to shoot the last two. Um, we're also waiving the requirement that you have to go to two pro-ams to qualify to come shoot the classic. We're going to allow uh, anybody that wants to basically come come shoot the classic that, that wants to, right. uh, you can qualify normally for the classic through the state championships. We would still recommend people go that route. If they can't make it to the pro-ams, go to your state championships, support your state clubs, get them back up and running as well as the pro-am series, and then come join us at, at the classic. The, um, the classic itself, we're hoping that by the time we get to Alabama for Coleman, we'll, back, we'll be back to our normal standard times of shooting and, and all the other things like the, the team shoots. We were joking a second ago about the nightmare. This would be a nightmare. But I think people recognize, hey, <laughs> the nightmare is not having an ASA. The right. nightmare is having nothing. And so this next one may look a little different than your normal ASA, but at least we're going to get out there and shoot and have the opportunity to be together. I mean, talk about what this has been like for you and your team just not knowing. I mean, this is your season. This is your main business for the ASA, and, you know, it's been just uncertain for you. I think, yeah, that's the hardest part is, is not really knowing what's going to happen next. When we, when we had the situation initially come up at, at Uchi Creek with the, at Fort Benning, and we knew the base commander well before that announcement came out from the base commander on that Friday, that we knew what was happening. We already been in contact with the, the MWR, which is the Morale Welfare and Recreation people at Benning. They had told us that first of that week that that was going to come out from the base commander, which was going to preclude us from having an event there. And we were successful in basically finding a date that worked for everybody down there as well as for us, which was the end of August. So flipping that one, um, we took the time, we looked at it, we did everything we could. Uh, when it came to Texas, obviously, everybody knew that April suddenly became a huge national problem, not right. just for Texas, but for everybody. And so those two events, uh, we, we rescheduled one, we lost one. And it's the same thing we're going through now between Illinois and Kentucky. You're talking to all these people, you're talking to their state people, you're trying to find a model that will allow us to put on an event that everybody can come enjoy, um, but it's going to have to be a one-off. It's not going to be the same. Mike, we do want to thank you and your team for uh, all the work that you've done to keep us informed and get these tournaments off the ground. We were talking on the phone yesterday. If we get through this season getting four out of the six events, we'll consider that a pretty good success. So I uh, thank you for what you and your team have done. Uh, in case people are listening to this yeah, and they're not it's sure kind of like where winning to a Stugley contest. Right. <laughs> yeah. We just invited everybody to, to go through the numbers. We're actually actively working with the sponsors about how this is going to affect their relationship with ASA and how it's going to look going forward with them and then staying in touch with the community. But our goal right now is that by June 1st, we should have definitive information on exactly how we're going to have to execute this event and what concessions we might make. I'll give you an example of a perfect situation of we don't know what we're doing yet. I want to say I appreciate everything that you're thinking of. It certainly sounds like you're trying to think of all these things that you probably never had to think of before. Uh, but I would also be remiss if I didn't thank you for your participation in our weekly shooting challenge that we've been having with Cam. People have been loving it. You know, it gets them to, you know, if, even if they don't have the targets, they can print out those paper targets keep practice up, you know, keep shooting at those ASA rings. And we certainly appreciate your partnering with us to get people out there shooting. 
I mean, our contribution to that is a, has been very, very minor compared to what you guys have done. I mean, when, when uh, Josh brought us the concept and, and we looked at it and then saw the first one that you launched out there and people started getting excited about at least being feeling connected back to the archery community, which is the main thing that that's doing. Um, I, I was I was blown away by how successful you guys have, have made that. In fact, I told Josh, I said, we'll 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 do whatever we can to support that. We've even talked about possibly offering like an ASA lifetime membership as a grand prize or a bigger prize towards the end of the year. Uh, we don't even sell lifetime memberships anymore. We get hounded constantly for them. So whoever wins it could probably auction it off for some real cash. <laughs> yeah, well, we do, but, uh, we yeah, do appreciate we're, we're your partnership there. 